Hi there, welcome back to the Caffeinated Classroom and this edition of Teacher Tip Happy Hour where I give you quick actionable tips you can use right now, maybe in your classroom. Today it's definitely gonna be outside of your classroom. If, if you missed my video last week, we were talking all about what to put and what not to put on your teacher resume and bringing up some things that are either questions that maybe you have thought of or maybe even some questions you haven't thought of yet. So if you missed that video, check it out. I'll link it in the iCards. I'll also link it in the description box down below. Today, in that same vein, we are going to be talking not about your teacher resume and sending in the application and cover letter, but actually when you get that phone call to come in for an interview, how to prepare for that interview, what to say, what to wear, how to prepare, and how to follow up. So let's get started. Cheers. Okay, so we've all been there. Pretty much every teacher I have ever known, in fact, has been there. We finish our credential program and we prepare our resume, we prepare our portfolio, we write and send out roughly 7 million cover letters with our applications and our resumes and everything's looking great and it's super exciting and then the spring goes by and then you wait and you wait and you wait for what seems like an eternity until finally you get a bite and somebody calls and they schedule an interview and you are on cloud nine. It is the most exciting thing to work so hard and want something so much and start to see that really pay off and start to see like envisioning yourself in a classroom with actual students who are your students and like the dream starts to come true. And then reality starts to set in and you realize that you're going to have to go to an actual school an interview with actual experienced educators and you just might not know exactly how to prepare. Don't worry, I've got you covered. First, let's talk about what you're gonna wear. So I got a little bit more profesh for this week's video. I put on a blazer, why? Because the thing to think about when you are interviewing for any sort of a job at all especially a job in education, is professionalism. I know we shouldn't judge a book by its cover. However, the way that we present ourselves to the outside world, especially in something like a teaching interview, will make or break others' perceptions of us. And if others have perceptions of us that are inaccurate because of the way we have put ourselves off into the world, by being unprofessional or appearing unprofessional, then it's going to be really, really hard to achieve our goals. And right now your goal is to get a teaching job. So the first thing that I'm always going to say when it comes to preparing for something like an interview, especially with like what to wear, is to do your research. Find out about the school. Is it a school that provides uniforms and requires staff and students alike to wear a uniform every day? Well then dress accordingly. Is it a school a little bit more like my experience where things are a little bit more laid back? We are a true Southern California culture and climate around my school and my district. And so things are a little bit more laid back, but at the same time, that doesn't mean that I would ever show up to a teaching interview, even at the most seemingly laid back school wearing jeans or wearing something that is not at least business wear, right? So I would, I would say by a rule of thumb, when you're figuring out which way to your teaching interview, don't go any more casual than business casual and denim is too casual. <laughs> that is my honest opinion. It is also my observation. And I did my research on this one. Dial it up a notch from jeans. I wear jeans every single day to work, but I would not wear them for an interview. Something to think about, maybe wear the school's colors. I mean, quite frankly, Teaching is a pretty thematic like experience, so get into it. See if you can wear the school's colors or maybe some sort of a nod to their school and to their school culture would be a good idea. It's, it at least creates a talking piece, right? And it's something that you can jump off of. Another thing to think about, and this might not occur to everybody, but it definitely always occurs to me, is wear something that you're going to be physically comfortable in. Because if you're like me, when you get nervous, you're going to start sweating. <laughs> like your whole body will start to sweat. So wearing colors that will show that, wearing fabrics that will show that, wearing something that's too tight or ill-fitting or just not quite right is going to alter the way that you present yourself. And you want to be able to present yourself and talk to your teaching skills and capabilities as best you can. So wear something that is comfortable, that can breathe, whether it's snowing outside or 85 degrees 
you're gonna wanna wear something that will be kind to you and allow you to be your best self. I like to go with something like the good old button down shirt with maybe some pants or some sort of a business bottom or like what I'm wearing today. I have on a printed cotton shirt. This one might be a little bit loud, but like, I don't know that you could wear like a leopard print shirt at every single school. So, you know, take that into consideration, but something like a comfortable shirt with a blazer just to business dress it up is a really good way to, I'm very comfortable in this. It fits well. It's not super duper fancy. I might wear just some black pants on the bottom or a skirt or something like that, depending on what the weather calls for, right? The other like th quick little thing before we move on from what to wear, just think about your shoes. Sandals are not business attire. I would dare say open-toed shoes of any kind are not really business attire. And mind you, I'm a Southern California girl born and bred. I live in my flip-flops and yet I would never wear open-toed shoes to a business event something like an interview. Just keep that in mind. You don't have to like take my opinions here with a grain of salt, but just like think about your feet showing. Okay, let's talk about what to bring. I would say definitely bring at least one more copy of your teaching resume just to have on hand because oftentimes principals and other administrators are doing quite a lot of interviewing and so they might have a lot of papers to shuffle through it. If you can just say here, I have it right here bam, easy, you've, you know, like in case you need another copy, here you go, just have it at the ready. The other thing that you might wanna bring is a teaching portfolio, but I would say be practical about your teaching portfolio. So my teaching portfolio was not practical. My teaching portfolio was a three inch binder with all of these sheet protectors that were filled with great stuff. They were definitely filled with great stuff. I had in there my teaching philosophy. I had in there a classroom management plan, which really I didn't know what I was talking about yet because I didn't have enough. I, I like looking back on my classroom management plan, it doesn't make sense for like real actual teenagers in the real world, but that's okay. I tried. Um, and it had like full unit plans. It had student work samples. It had way too much and I was lugging it around and I felt super awkward when I would like heave it and clunk it up and down onto a table and then be like, would you like to look through my portfolio? The tome that I've brought from my all of one year of teaching experience in the student teaching, right? So like no matter how long you've been doing this, I would say be choosy in the things that you include in your teaching portfolio and here are some suggestions. Really, all I needed was like two to three strong examples of a lesson that I have designed, some assessment, uh, some skill practice sort of assignments or activities that I have designed as well as assessment that I have designed. Like if I have those three areas covered with some student samples and how those things were graded, that can all fit in a little folder. That could even fit on like a one to two pages front and back. Maybe include my brief teaching philosophy just to get in there just like a little bit more of me and my personality as like the cover and then get into a lesson activity or assignment and an assessment with like I said, a few student work samples, maybe one for each. All of this should be able to fit in like a little folder. It does not need to be in a big, huge binder. It does not need to be decked out with page protectors and all of that stuff. It just needs to be something easy that I can keep in my bag and take out in case they want to see an example, but I don't need to have this huge thick binder that goes thud on the table and I say, what do you wanna see? It was weird, it felt awkward for me. I got weird looks from the principals that I interviewed with and it's just something to keep in mind. Another idea that you might wanna use is to take that shorter, brief teaching portfolio and make it even smaller. Make yourself a highlight reel basically that fits on the front and back of a page that you could leave behind that has a little snippet about your teaching philosophy. It has some anecdotes about lesson plans you've created and maybe you take that full lesson plan and you shrink it down to a JPEG and you put it on this little document and you, you do the same thing with photos of student work examples and you keep it all basically, like I said, like a highlight reel that you can then leave behind. That might be something that's even more enticing for very busy <laughs> educational administrators to look over and get an idea for the kind of teacher you are to then hopefully make the next step to either call you in for another interview, ask you to come in and teach a sample lesson or do whatever it is that moves forward. Remember, everything you do, you want it to be easy for them to say yes to you, which leads me to what to say. Listen to questions carefully and answer questions fully, right? Listen to the whole question, ask ask for clarification if is ever needed, and then answer the whole entire question 
And you don't really have to go any further than that. Over talking and over sharing can derail your interview. Another thing to keep in mind is to keep it positive. It can be really, let's say, tempting to, if you know a school district or if you know a school and their rival really well, it can be tempting to say disparaging remarks, let's say, about the other school. Well, in my experience, districts have a lot of movement between professionals and teachers move and administrators move between the different schools, the sister schools in the district. And if an applicant starts talking disparagingly about one of our sister schools because they think they might uh, get an in with the administrators, school pride is a wonderful thing, but it doesn't mean that we're putting down other schools, right? So just make sure that everything that you say is positive. The last thing I wanna say about what to say, I talked about this a little bit in what to put on your teacher resume on that, uh, on that video. Be honest about your abilities and your training. Don't embellish your skills because you might get called on it and it might be embarrassing. Or more than that, you might get hired for something that you can't do. And also, you just have a moral obligation to be truthful, quite frankly. If you are an educator, if you're an aspiring educator, you are a role model for children. Children of varying ages are going to be looking up to the educators in their life. We have an obligation to be as good of a person as we can. Last, let's talk about what to do after. I would say it is a really, really, really good idea to send a brief thank you note acknowledging maybe some of the talking points that you had during your interview back to the administrator or the individual who interviewed you. Email is good, a handwritten note is even better. And after that, stop. Don't send more follow-ups. If you don't hear back, you don't hear back, just stop. The waiting is absolutely excruciating. I know this firsthand. I waited and waited and waited multiple times because I need you guys to know this. If you haven't been around here very long or if you didn't know this, I was a teacher, I was a brand new teacher when the recession hit the United States of America and I lost my job over and over and over again and I interviewed over and over and over again and I sent out so many resumes. So while this is over a decade ago experience that I'm talking about, I remember very well the wait and it is a necessary evil because contacting and recontacting will get you ignored and blocked. So that's, that's just the truth. I don't know that a lot of people are gonna tell new and aspiring teachers that information, but if you bug, they're gonna ignore you and block you. So I want to leave you with this. Teaching jobs can be extremely difficult to obtain. Depending on where you live and where you're applying and what area and grade level you are teaching, they can be really, really hard to get. I am in Southern California, so like I know what I'm talking about here. My advice is this, keep going. Uh, try and keep your eye on the prize as hard as it might be and a great way to keep your eye on the prize and try to stay positive is to connect with educators. Connect with educators through social media. Connect with educators however it is that you can so that you can remember why it is that you want to go into education or why you are already in education and that will make the waiting a little bit less painful. And just being able to connect and have that moment of like understanding with another person. Like I personally, I understand what it feels like to wait. I get where you're coming from and I'm sorry that it feels this way and I'm not saying this is just something everyone has to go through, but it's something that so many people have gone through that you can find commiseration and you can find connection in some of your teaching colleagues from all over the world. So with that, I am going to bid you adieu. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already done so. Click the little bell so you don't miss any future videos. I am uploading every single week. And let's make sure that we connect on social media. I am on Instagram at The Caffeinated Class. I post every single day on stories and on my feed about what is going on in the classroom and out. And so I would love to connect with you there. And until we meet again, I will see you guys next time. Bye.